like if you want to go completely wild, I just think like you know there should be efficient ways for us to update the DOM without having to write all these diff algorithms or like like awkward compiled outputs ourselves. Right. Like, so I wanted to ask how you assess the impact of technologies like WebAssembly or even the already kind of controversial Web 3.0 on how we develop web interfaces. Do you see them positively impacting or changing the direction of the front end framework evolution? I think so. First of all, WebAssembly and Web 3 are two completely yes, <laughs> different right. things. They right? are. Yes. Uh, so. I don't honestly. I don't think Web three has anything to do with front end technologies. Yep. It's just the same. Yep. Uh, Web three is really only about the decentralization of the data layer. So WebAssembly is interesting because um, the the problem with WebAssembly is you can't compile Java's pure JavaScript to WebAssembly, which means you need to write your source code in a in another language. Right. Yep. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is um, the deployment uh, cost, the size of the binaries and the actual performance gain in real world scenarios. Like you have to gauge that uh, in order to see wh whether it's worth it. Like personally, my opinion is WebAssembly is great at really computation incentive, uh, intensive and well-defined tasks mm -hmm. like processing a video directly in the browser or compressing an image directly in the browser or computing some hash. I think these are good like use cases where a dedicated library written distributed as web WebAssembly will provide really great performance. But writing your like application logic, especially on a fast iterating project using a compiled language that compiles to WebAssembly, I just don't think it provides enough benefits compared yep. to JavaScript because in most cases um, this is not really a bottle like the code you write in JavaScript in your application it's very unlikely to be a real bottleneck yep. uh, in the first place like if you have really computation intensive like replace it with, with uh, a library that's in WebAssembly but write everything in WebAssembly like personally I don't think it's a good trade-off especially considering like say if you write Rust and compile to WebAssembly, mm -hmm. then Rust is a very difficult language. And a lot of the business needs in the front, uh, in the typical application is very fluid in yeah. flux, right? You yeah. need to change Absolutely. things around a lot. Sometimes you need to do dirty things and Rust really doesn't like you right. for yeah. doing that. Absolutely. Um, so you're going to find yourself pretty painful. And then there's the hiring aspect. It's hard to find competent Rust developers. It's yeah. much easier to find someone who's good at JavaScript. Absolutely. Um, so there are multiple aspects you need to consider. So personally, I don't think WebAssembly is going to become like, say, we're going to write full applications with a, with, with a WebAssembly, but there are going to be a lot of these well-defined computation intensive tasks. Slowly, we see uh, WebAssembly distributed in, uh, implementation becoming, say, the go-to choice for a lot mm -hmm. of people. So that's very possible. Thank you for that. Um, and then I really love this question. Again, all of these are, are from our community. Um, have you had any out of the box ideas for Vue 3 development, which you simply couldn't implement uh, due to limitations of things like the browser itself, uh, perhaps JavaScript, or even just CSS specifications, anything like that? Yeah, so um, the thing is with, uh, with front end frameworks, we essentially always, we're, we're kind of dancing with shackles. Yeah, yeah uh, sure. From the, basically, the initial design stage is like, what can we do today? And like, say, in the early days of Vue, like we decided to not support IE8. And that yeah. was controversial back then. Yeah, back right? then, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the thing about framework development is you're always working according to the lowest denominator of all the browsers you want to support. Yep. So we are uh, like, as a framework designer, I'm always kind of really conservative and defensive on the feature that I leverage. Yep. Because you want to make sure the framework is as compatible as possible, right? Like, if you want to go completely wild, I just think, like, you know, there should be efficient ways for us to update the DOM without having to write all these diff algorithms or, like, like awkward compiled outputs ourselves. Right. Like, like there should be a declar declarative way of, of just updating the DOM that's mm -hmm. built into the browsers. But I don't know, like, maybe someone's working on it. Sure. Uh, there were like the template proposals and all that stuff, but yeah. it just never went through. 
CSS, uh, I think CSS is going in some interesting directions.、Um, mm-hmm. Like pairing container queries, I think is huge. And natural scoping, like there was a proposal that's related to non shadow DOM based style scoping,、uh, which is, was really good. I wish we have that so that、mm-hmm. we can like basically completely drop the custom s- scope CSS implementation in view and just use that. Yeah.、Um, Basically, I would, be, I would be happy if the browser just provided things that we can no longer hack around ourselves.、Um, Absolutely. Cool. That makes sense.、Uh, and again, I want to be super respectful of your time. I only have a couple more for you. And actually, this is the last one that's sort of technical. And then we'll wrap up with a couple of, of non tech questions if that's cool.、Um, but our last technical question I have for you is Do you see Vue expanding to be cross platform? And how can Vue 3 help with cross platform apps, whether that be mobile to desktop, rendering to canvas, things like that? So, first of all, Vue already has a custom render API. So, you can、mm-hmm. technically build your own render rendering to canvas. There is a project called Trios.js、yeah. that uses Vue syntax but renders to、uh, WebGL,、mm-hmm. so 3D stuff. And then,、uh, Eduardo, who's on our team, recently just、uh, open sourced a project called,、uh, I forgot its name, but it's using Vue to build terminal UI. Yep.、Mm-hmm. That's interesting.、Uh, okay. Right. So it's、yeah. also using the custom render stuff. So Vue Core itself is architectured in a way to be platform agnostic. The DOM facing part is a higher order runtime that's based on the core runtime. So you can build other runtimes targeting other ones using the API, which is、mm-hmm. documented, but that's te- technical stuff, right?、Um, right? If you want a truly cross platform native development, the major chunk of work is actually implementing a rendering engine that like, behaves the same on both iOS and Android. And that's a huge amount of work. Like, For sure. You know, you know how the React Native teams hires, I don't know, like a couple dozen of developers. Full time Facebook engineers just to work on the native rendering part. Flutter team probably has even more people. Yeah.、Uh, right. So,、um, so as an independent open source project, our focus is still on the web.、Uh, but we do architecture the core to be platform agnostic. So, if any third party with the resource and interest want to work on a cross platform thing based on Vue, that's possible. But we just don't have the bandwidth to actually. Do something like that. You know,、mm-hmm. Some、yeah. ideas could be you know, connecting the lower, lower level Flutter engine with a Vue custom runtime.、Yep. It's totally f- possible.、Um, but obviously, like, for us, we don't really have the bandwidth to do that. 